How's it going guys? This is a new Mercedes app and that is of course the brand new S-Class of the EVs, the EQS. So I haven't looked at the launch video yet, so I thought we could just jump in straight in and look at this together. I have seen the pictures of it, the front, the side and the rear, and that's what we're going to talk about later in this video. I'm going to redesign some parts of the car, but let's have a look at the functions of the car first here and see what this is all about. So here we go. like the taillights, this spir spiral thing looks cool. That That's a bit weird, you have to like summon the door with your arms, something like this. Just me, I never had any issues closing the door myself. But if you want to do some motion like that, I guess that's fine. Very cool display, interior display looks insane and we have four wheel steering. Just like we have on the new S class as well. I like the two-tone colors and I think the rear three-quarter view is the best view for this car the, we're gonna focus on the front view in this video and when we jump into Photoshop a bit later in a minute here and they say there is going to be an AMG version with 700 plus horsepower that's awesome, I really look forward to seeing that out on the street, it's gonna be nuts. It looks cool, it, the proportions of this car is the typical EV, you, you can't mistake this for anything but an EV. And that has to do with the A-pillar, how far it stretches forward, even as, as far as you have the A-pillar almost connecting with the front axle, if you look at it from a side view, which we're gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about in Photoshop. I really like the wheels as well. I've seen the new E-Class out now a few times and it has similar wheels and it looks really cool when it's spinning because it looks like you have two wheels in one. It looks great. It's the same as the EQA as well. Similar style to the EQS wheel as it looks like. I think the interior is probably the uh, strong point of this EQS. I really like the interior look of this thing. Even though it's all digital, it still looks pretty cool and, uh, and high quality. All right, so I think that's it. Uh, cool intro, definitely. And I like where Mercedes is going here, but I do just don't think that the front view here, let's go back and we can get a focus image of the front view right here. I don't think that this piece right here, this intake here, fits with this overall graphic that is the grille and the, the face of the car. The, the grille, the headlights and this LED bar. It, it looks a little modernized melted cheese if that makes sense. You see these lines here, they're not well defined and here we have defined curvatures in each of these corners. So let's just take this, it's easier to take jump into Photoshop and I also want to talk about the proportions and the typical EV style of this car which uh, as I said it can't be mistaken for, for an ICE car for sure that has to do with the rake of the front end and also the A-pillar. So let's jump into Photoshop and uh, redesign the front end and see what we can do with it. Alright guys so here it is I'm excited for this one this is the EQS of course and this as I said I think is the best view of this car and the reason for that is because it looks like an internal combustion engine from this angle you can't really see the front yet and it doesn't have any weird proportions in this view except for we see still here that the A-pillar is stretching all the way in line here almost with the front axle. Compare that to a modern ICE S-Class, the new S-Class for example, and you will see that the A-pillar starts so, uh, stops somewhere around here. So this is a huge increase in cabin space which we're gonna look at more in detail when I show you this inside view. Another thing I want to mention here is, I don't know what, I hope this is functional. I hope this is a vent that extracts air from the turbulence going on here in, inside the wheel when it's spinning so the air flows out here. Because otherwise I have no idea why Mercedes would put a uh, air outlet in the bump, in the rear bumper, which they do on pretty much every single uh, model that they have they always this is like a Mercedes trademark they just like to slap it this 
this part here onto pretty much every model even though it has in some cases zero functions i'm not sure about the eqs if it does have a function then it's legit then i can see why they put it there but if it's just for a styling feature i have no idea why, why they would put that on an eqs maybe they could put it on the eqc or something like that not on the stately s class of the evs just put one detail like that and then we have nothing else going on anywhere on, on, else on the car but other than that i think the rear view is a really cool looking view this looks a little undefined for me a little bit uh, wobbly and insecure those lines because you have those lines but then you look at the leds that are inside are very straight and very structured just a horizontal led in the in the middle of the car we could maybe do something about that but that's not going to be the focus on this redesign today it's going to be on the front view so let's jump into the side view and have a look at the proportions of this thing right here so this is typical ev proportions what i mean by that is just look at this part right here and you can tell immediately that it's an ev first of all you have the extension of the cabin or, or the greenhouse going all the way from here into this point right here it's i mean the part of the car that is not the greenhouse is very small it's basically this part right here and this part right here the rest of the entire length of the car from here to here this part is all greenhouse which is nuts but that's also the 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 benefit of having an ev that's that that's what i've been saying for a very long time that theoretically you can extend this a pillar you can have it go all the way from uh, from this point of the car from the very end of the car and have it stretch all the way to this point if you want to however the problem with that is you still need crumple zones and you still need some safety if you have a have an impact and i think uh, going through crash tests if you sit up here as a person as a driver it's probably not ideal and that's why they still have this part right here on the uh, evs to have that safety in the crumple zones if you have an impact but just look at canoe for example they have the greenhouse stretching all the way here however the passengers are still sitting somewhere in the middle but visually it looks very cool on the canoe truck for example so the the i don't want to say issue but the thing that's so different with the with the eqs here compared to a regular s class is the front end and i get why they do it it's all about efficiency it's all about getting this drop shaped design here in order to reduce the air the air resistance in the front here you want to have a smooth line as possible and, and not have any creases for example in between the uh, the the uh, hood here and the greenhouse the a pillar you don't want to have too much of an angle here to hit to, to to for the wind resistance so i understand why they have such a rake design here almost like a flat surface going like that almost like a lamborghini gallardo or something like that if you look at the, those cars maybe not the gallardo but if you look at a 458 spider or a 458 uh, italia for example you have the a pillar starting in the same location as we have here and that is of course a mid-engine car they can do that because they don't have to fit an engine here the good thing here is we don't have to fit an engine here we don't have to fit an engine somewhere here we don't even have to fit an engine here because the motor is all packed back here so we can maximize the space of the cabin of the car so this creates proportions that are a little off they just look a little fishy <laughs> it looks like if, like some sort of fish in my opinion this design right here the eqs so what i want to do is just i don't know try to be, i can I, I could design this redesign this and make it into a regular looking sedan but that that wouldn't that would lose the entire efficiency of what an ev is supposed to be very smooth and dynamic and cut through the wind like a like a drop shaped uh volume so what i want to do is instead is just try to fix up these graphics here and try to make it more more uh, german basically more german i think this is still too uh hyundai for me it looks too much like uh, like an asian design house instead of a, a european design house uh, specifically a german design house which has always had this structure to it as you know if you watch my redesigns before you know that i'm a fan of of german design i'm also a fan of uh, all designs i'm a fan of american design uh north american design european and asian designs but i don't like when they cross and become one they should be separate separated so we can enjoy the different styles from the different parts of the world and that's kind of what i want to do here i want to bring back the the european styling traditions 
to the to the EQS here and see how that is going to, to turn out. I honestly don't know exactly how to do it yet, so I'm just gonna jump in and play around with this. Uh, I don't have a plan <laughs> really, so let's jump in and let's see how this is going to turn out. All right, guys, so here we go. Let's try and figure this out. I do know what's so weird about this design, and that is these typical EV proportions that we just talked about. These, these occur not just on the Mercedes EQS here, but you have them on the Tesla Model 3 uh, 2, for example, and that is that the front part, the volume of the front part looks too small to the volume of the rest of the body. So in this case, what I think you're going to go with here is to still keep the kind of sloping uh, front end and the raked front end from the hood going up to the windscreen, even though this is a typical Mercedes design that I redesigned on the CLS as well, even though it, it, even though that's an internal combustion engine, they still have that design feature, which I don't, I'm, I'm not really a fan of. I like to have more, more of a structured hood, specifically if you talk about CLSs and S-classes and stuff like that, big uh, sedans. But in this case, I can see why they did it, and that is because of the airflow, of course. So how do we solve that then? How do we keep the airflow low, but still making the proportions look more like, uh, like almost like a coupe S-Class or something like, like that? Still have it very sleek, still have it very EV, but work a little bit on the proportions to make it tilt more towards an internal combustion engine when it comes to the proportions of the car. And the thing that I think is will help here is to just extend the front end just a little bit. We can still have the same angle on the front end. It tilts backwards a little bit, so the air goes up and over the car. I, I get that. And it also has uh, this short nose that I think is the main problem <laughs> with the car. So what I did is just copy the front, extended it a little bit, maybe a couple of inches, you still have the same kind of profile of the car. You still have probably a very similar drag coefficient. But what you get instead, you can justify this move by saying, let's let's add some luggage space in the front here and make it uh, look and at the same time as we add some more space in the front, in the front of the car, we also make it look more like a, a regular internal combustion engine car. So instead of having the big engine in the front, we're now gonna have a big luggage space. And on top of that, we're gonna solve this EV proportion is issue that we have specifically looking at the car from this angle right here, which is a three quarter front view. So that's kind of the idea that I had with this. I can't wait to see this out on the streets or in real life because that's always the case when you look at cars on videos, when you look at them on pictures and so on. There is always, every time, there is a difference, difference from seeing them online and on the screen and then you see the whole volume in 3D in front of you. That definitely has a different impact on how you perceive the volume that's in front of you. So I want to see this in real life and I can't wait for the, uh, I can't believe that AMG is going electric. How, uh, how crazy is that? You, if you said that 15 years ago, people would definitely laugh at you that it's going to be a, a 700 plus S-Class AMG fully electric. But that's the times we live in. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the EQS here. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the on the shape of the car. Do you, is it liked or is it disliked? I'm not really sure. I haven't looked at any any uh, any feedback from, from, uh, from people who have seen the design. So comment below. And let me know what you think about this car. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.